Welcome back to Nervous Reviews, where we're going to continue our Dresden Files review. This is book two, also called The Fool Moon. So this is a book that I've just picked up recently. I just read it in the past week, and I'm really rushing to get this review out, because I've been reading a little bit slower than expected. Uh, I, I really expected to be able to get each book done in like four or so days, but it's turned into like a week, and these are the shorter books too, so I'm kind of worried about what's going to happen in the future. But hopefully I should be able to get myself together and really finish up by the time Peace Talks comes out, although that's seeming increasingly unlikely, but we'll see how this. By the way, this hat I, I have no idea what Dresden looked like even the author himself said that he had no idea what Dresden looks like uh, until like book four or five when he looked in the mirror and he finally figured it out I mean Dresden looked in the mirror and finally figured it out himself uh, so I put this on because every time I try to imagine him he's just like the book covers and the issue with that is that the book covers just show him like this so I don't actually know what his face looks like, which is the big issue because I really wish I could figure out what his face looks like. I've seen some fan art, but it completely like contradicts everything and it's really confusing for me. So that's just why I'm wearing this. It's for the Dresden season. So if you see me wearing this, you know it's a Dresden review. Now, one of the big things that I said about book one, Stormfront, I said that that book really has a lot of foreshadowing and a lot of little nuggets of information that's put out into the world that you seem to pick up on as you go along in the story. This is very much like that. I expected that this book would continue from the first book and really kind of answer some of those questions. But as we go through this book, it seems like there's just more questions and nothing has been answered, which originally might have been a difficult thing for me to, to read. But seeing as there's so many books left in the series, I completely understand because all of these little uh, secrets from the first book have come out and we see a little piece of information that basically tells us, no, this isn't one mystery. This is three mysteries. And this isn't just a simple thing that you could have gotten just one answer for like some memories of his father it's like a whole conspiracy and that this giant interesting uh, just you know big ring of all this information and secrets and questions that really draws me in and it still feels as natural as ever I really feel like these secrets have been put into the book in a very logical way so spaced out and so well thought through it's like Dresden's real-life mind just kind of brushing over these things but he knows that his dad is dead right but what he doesn't know is these little things that have been coming out to affect him and he thinks about these things as if he was a real person he kind of just brushes on them because he knows these things and he makes it seem very very realistic and draws me in in such an interesting way I do have a problem with this series though so far uh, I seem to have really skipped out on this on the last review when I read the books I really felt like the prose itself was very basic and this makes sense because Dresden was a uh, no because Butcher was very, very young when he wrote the first book, and so it very much makes sense that this was, you know, not very good in terms of prose. I feel that, like the writing itself is very offbeat, and it, I, I, I gave it away uh, for that one. I said, okay, it's fine because it's the first book, but for this book, it really continues, and it seems like he learned nothing from the first book. The interesting thing about this is that there's a lot of parts that are way, way better written in terms of plot beats, but the description and dialogue itself was just really low, low brow because of just this guy's really new to writing and you can really tell that. To be more specific, I really find that the, his descriptions or his internal monologue really offsets the beat of the story. Like there's a certain story going on, right? As you're going through, you're kind of enjoying a certain story. And then he starts inner monologuing. And when he inner monologues, it's like a very interesting timing because he talks for a long amount of time. If I were to say this out loud or if I were to think this even, like to make it even faster, it would take maybe 30 seconds. And in the middle of like a giant fight, or if he's just like running in the woods, it's such a weird thing to kind of think about. This guy's thinking illogical thoughts in the middle of like running away, or if he's fighting someone and then he starts thinking for a long period of time about what this, what he's going to do about his plan, which is all fine, right? Planning stuff is logical, but the way he plans things out makes it feel like he's taking way too long to think this through in the middle of a fight. And it really, really offsets the way I think about this because I can't envision somebody just standing there imagining for a long period of time and then going out to fight like that seems so weird to me it feels very offbeat dresden continues in this book and i really feel like his character takes a step down in the first book we find a very distinct character that's very witty and really has a lot of comebacks in this book we kind of have the same similar character but he's toned down as if we've already established that and i don't really appreciate that part of it i think that people really uh, rate that this book is one of the lower uh, dresden books because of that and i can't completely disagree because the character itself does take a step down and that's kind of unfortunate because harry dresden is in itself at uh, the original first book 
an okay character. He doesn't have the ability to step down because he can't step down. He, he's not that good yet. If he's a great character, sure, he can step down. But at this point, he really needs to be built up. And I can see the beginning of this character really coming together. And I can really enjoy that because I can see the journey in the future and I can really say that would be an incredible journey to follow. But at this point, it's not at a time, it's not a time when you can step back and sit down. Dresden really needs to be pulled forward and that's not done in this book. There's one specific scene within the novel that I really found interesting. Uh, this was a scene where I don't want to spoil too much, but there is this introspective scene that really takes on a literal approach. And I find that very confusing because I can't tell whether, like this is completely out of the blue, which is the big, big problem. If it was like foreshadowed or something, that would make sense. But it's completely out of the blue. And we see him stand there and he, he talks to like a literal version of his introspection. And that's so weird to me because I don't know if it's a literal a thing, if that really happened, if it's a thing of magic, if that was what uh, was supposed to be uh, conveyed through this relationship. Because this is not at a point where you can really know what's going on around Dresden. There's a period where he really kind of talks to this thing and it really brings a lot to light. But I also feel like this is a very lazy way to bring things to light. It has no explanation and it's just completely like a du duus ex machina, right? It's so confusing in that way. It just really feels off to me. It could have been done a little bit better. I feel like theoretically it's a very good idea, but he just didn't pull it off by foreshadowing it at all. And that's really where it fell apart. But I do have one really big positive to say before I end this video, which is that there was a big chunk in the middle of this novel, which I just found absolutely fantastic. This is the work of a master writer. Uh, and it's really confusing to me that people don't really talk about this too often because at the beginning there's this interesting mystery and we get into it and we go right but then by the middle we have what I feel like is the climax and yeah, I know I know the three act structure theoretically there should be a climax here but the problem with this is that this was such an incredibly good climax that it actually was better than the final climax in my opinion there was way more at stake for us um, and there was just so much more activity, so much more like interesting stuff going around that I really, really loved that. I found that the middle was so good. The ending was a good ending, right? It was okay. It was pretty good. So I can, I mean, I can't fault anything with that. But the middle was just amazing. And uh, I did have some problems, specifically with the choreography, specifically with the description of the world around it, because it was so intermingled with internal thoughts and stuff that it really confused me as to where they are, what is the layout of the setting, what is going on, and that completely confused me. And one final thing before I leave off, I did find a lot of the uh, conflict confusing. There was a bunch of villains in the story, as you usually get in a Dresden novel, and it really came to me as confusing because there were certain people uh, that were very confusing as to why they were trying to beat up Dresden. Like it was explained a little bit here and there, but it kind of got really confusing for me because it's not that I didn't pay attention. It's that I was following the story and I was really into the story. And it's just like, it was maybe one line or something where I kind of understood. And then it moved on, and I just have no idea what that was now thinking back because I kind of forgot about it. It was just such a small little thing that I just didn't pick up on, which is just unfortunate because it's such a big part of the story. I feel like it should have been established a little bit stronger and more within the story because it is established later, but this is the climax, and I want to know what it's, what's going on right when they're introduced because that's kind of where it gets interesting, and just that's kind of unfortunate for me. Overall, I do believe that this novel is a little bit better than Stormfront because Stormfront had a little bit of a shaky, uh, shaky plot and a shaky narrative going on with some confusing villains and some very weird stuff going on that the plot was very confusing. This one was way more streamlined and made a lot more sense by the end and was a much better murder mystery plot. And at the same time, the villains were much more interesting and the lore was so much more interesting. Uh, and the middle was just such a great middle that I cannot stand to say that it's worse than the first book, like many people definitely do. And this one is, I'm just gonna call it a two star. It's, it's a really fun novel. I had a lot of fun right at the middle, but at the end it kind of started falling off and so I do really really enjoy it because the middle was just such a fun enjoyable area where we just got this giant fight scene and there was so much stake and so much interesting stuff going on that I had a lot of fun uh, so next week I'm gonna go ahead and review the next book which is Grave Peril I already started it uh, yesterday or today and I'm I'm so far I'm actually enjoying it people say that this is where the series really picks up so I look forward to that in about a week uh, thank you guys so much for watching and if you did enjoy this video please like this video and please let me know what your thoughts about the books or the reviews that I give out in the comments comments down below. I would very much enjoy that and I would very much appreciate your, uh, you know, your comments and your anything. So thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you enjoy these reviews, if you want to see the rest of my Dresden walkthrough, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.